However, the sound went out at about 24 minutes, 55 seconds. The reason for the sound going out is because we had to charge the headset. The battery was going uh, low, and so we had to charge it. And connecting it back up, the system wouldn't allow it. So we're going to go ahead and continue that communication because we figured the information was that vital that it is necessary to put forth this addition to the previous video on deeds. So we're going to let it continue, and then we're going to come in and explain the promissory note and a deed of trust to evidence indebtedness. He must have been in bankruptcy. Must have been in bankruptcy. Uh, county and owned by his parents. They agreed to lend Daniel the money and thereafter executed the deed conveying their interest in the subject property to Daniel and then Daniel evidenced the promise. Now we're going to stop right there. Now there's this thing that the note and the deed must go together, that they must go hand in hand. You're going to find that there are several cases where the courts say, no, that's not the case, that they're two separate instruments. What you have to know is this. A deed of trust is exactly that, a deed of trust. It doesn't matter if they created a statutory scheme. They utilize the word trust for a reason. There is a grantor, there is a beneficiary, there is a trustee. For all intents and purposes, that implies a trust. Doesn't matter if they created a statutory scheme. That implies a common law trust. Do not allow them to tell you that it's not a trust in a so-called conventional sense. It's a trust with the intent of the parties creating a trust. Now, as we stated to you guys time, time, and time again, and I haven't listened to the beginning of this video, so I don't know if it's explained in the beginning, but I'll explain it again. You cannot go to Johnny and say, Johnny, you have your car and it is for sale. I want to purchase your car, but the price of that vehicle is a little bit more than I have on hand, and I don't want to spend all of my cash. So I'm going to go get a loan so that I can purchase your car. Is it okay if I do that? And Johnny says, yeah, you can go get a loan. And you go and you get a loan. And you tell the loan officer, hey, um, Johnny gave me permission to get a loan to get his car. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put his car up as collateral. Okay? The bank says, yeah, you need to put some collateral, so we'll accept that as collateral. Okay, and you go back to Johnny and say, oh, by the way, I went to the bank and I told him I put your car up as collateral. What is Johnny going to tell you? says, well, you haven't purchased the car yet. I didn't give you permission to put my car up as collateral for something you haven't even purchased. We haven't completed our deal. You didn't ask me for permission. Well, you gave me permission to get the loan. Yes, I gave you permission to get a loan for yourself, but not for you to own my vehicle. You are supposed to come pay me first to get the vehicle. Johnny says, uh-uh, deal's off. But I've already got the loan, and I've already put your car up as collateral. I said, deal's off. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't pay back that loan. Can they go and take Johnny's car? Of course not. Johnny never agreed to have his car put up as collateral. When you go and you purchase a home, they take and they give you funding for the home. But the first step is to tell you that you have been approved. Pay attention to the word. Go back, look at the paperwork. Go back, get them to send you a copy of the paperwork. It shows that you were approved for a loan, and they tell you up to the amount that you were approved for. Go and take a look that there was no collateral. The collateral was your credit score. Based upon your credit, you are approved for a loan. Okay, however, you will have to put down the following amount. That's the collateral, people. That's why you were approved. Not because you placed the home as collateral for a loan. Remember, they have already told you the loan is not for the home. The loan is a personal loan. The loan is a personal loan. It is not for the purchase of a home. You are telling them that you're going to use the money's lent. For the purchase of a home. These are the technicalities that they don't go over in detail with you, but these are the facts. Go back, check it out, see. 
So now they give you the approval. Hey, you can go out there and you can find a home. It just must be in this price line, um, price range. Now, if it's over this amount, then you're going to have to make up the difference. Okay, but we will pay you, give you a loan. We will finance the loan up to this amount. Okay, so you go and you find the property for the amount of the loan. It's actually a couple of thousand dollars less. Now, if it's a couple of thousand dollars less, shouldn't you be able to use the additional amount to pay any costs? You should be able to, but they won't allow it. Why is that? Well, because the price of the home is only such and such, such and such. Anything else got to come out of your pocket. But why is that? I've been approved for a loan up to this amount. Should I not be able to get the loan up to that full amount? Well, yeah, but we're not going to do it. And so now you go and you sign the papers. Now, the bank has already funded. Pay attention. We funded the loan this morning. Really? You funded the loan? That means you paid the seller? Oh, yes, we paid the seller. You paid them in my name on my behalf? Oh, yes, we paid them in your name on your behalf. The money's being held in escrow until we complete the closing of our deal. Oh, we have to close the deal? Oh, so it's not closed yet? Oh, no, 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 no. You have to now put the home up as collateral for the loan. Wait, I have to put it up as collateral? You didn't tell me that at the beginning. Wait, 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 wait. Why do I have to put up a home to which I haven't taken possession of? Well, technically, you have taken possession of it. How have I taken possession of it? I haven't even been at home. You haven't given me the keys. How have I taken possession? Well, it's a technicality, sir. And it's the normal course of business. This is what we do every day. Every day. So, I mean, here, here are the papers. We just need you to sign here. You're going to be putting up the home. It's collater collateral. No, no, you didn't tell me about collateral when you funded the loan. So you've already funded the loan without collateral. You did it in my behalf, so that means you've already given me the loan. So how can you now ask for collateral? That seems like extortion. I think you're holding my keys from me, my property, which I now own, because you've given me a loan and you're withholding my property from me, denying me the right. Oh, a practice, a practice doesn't make perfect. A practice does not make law. A practice? That's a practice? Well, then you need to sit up there and perfect your practicing because, ooh, you got a lot of work to do because that don't make no sense. Ladies and gentlemen, the way things work out is that this happens every single day. Individuals are sitting up there putting up as collateral for a loan something that is unnecessary. The loan has already been given the person. They've already been approved for a loan up to a particular amount without placing the property as collateral. You cannot say, oh, I promise to place the property as collateral. Once I get the property and I get the loan, then I will put the property up as collateral. You cannot do that. You cannot make a promise to put something as collateral that you don't own. Remember, Johnny owns the car. So you can't take Johnny's car and tell them you're going to put Johnny's car up as collateral once you pay for it because it's not yours to make such a decision. The deal is not complete. So how can you promise to do something? Well, I promise to do it, uh, you know, if everything worked out. Yes, if everything worked out, but you don't have the authority to do that because possession is nine-tenths of the law. It's a maxim. You don't have the authority to put something up as collateral for which you do not own. Case in point, you cannot put a home up as collateral for which you've not taken possession of. You do not possess the home. You do not own it. Yes, there's a technicality that paperwork has been filled out, but you have yet to take possession of the home. Because you have not seized possession of the home, then you cannot put it up as collateral. Well, they say it funded, and because it funded, they, they, they paid it, and so that means they did it in my behalf, so technically I do own the home. Yes, here's the only problem. They are now telling you that you cannot get the keys to the home. These are trustees telling you can't get keys to your home unless you sign papers making them the beneficiary of not only the insurance, but of the trust agreement. When the courts tell you that the deed of trust is not an actual trust agreement, that is a lie because the banks are the beneficiary. If it's not an actual trust agreement, then why can't you receive the funding from the mortgage insurance 
on the single family housing loan guaranteed program when they sit up there and foreclose on the home. Why can't you file a claim against the bank for all the failures? Because you'll find out from the insurance company that the bank is the beneficiary of the insurance policy for which you signed and gave authorization by signing the deed of trust. The deed of trust is a contract. It is a trust agreement. It is supposed to be under equity law. They have been skirting this because they know that you all are not cognizant of the law. That's what's been going on. Look, I had somebody send me, well, someone sent me a copy of a case dealing with arbitration, and it was a judge. And this federal judge was telling the bank, no, you can't do that. No, you can't sue the Arbitration Association. And it was HEMP, HMP Arbitration Association, an arbitration association that founded itself under the principles to which SAA was founded. And the court ruled in Hemp's favor. Hemp could have gotten an award. They got the case dismissed. They could have gotten an award if they had filed into that case and if they had put in their motion to dismiss and to dismiss with prejudice. Because the court didn't deal with the fact that you cannot sue an arbitration association in regular court. You cannot sue an arbitration association in regular court. You must prove that each of their acts were not judicial in nature. If you cannot prove that the acts were not judicial in nature, then you're stuck. So they could have gotten it dismissed with prejudice, but the judge allowed the other party an opportunity to amend their complaint to come back in the court against the same parties. The judge basically told them what they needed to prove to bring the case. Judge gave them instructions as to what they needed to do to perfect their case. Interesting, ain't it? So, those of you who have deeds of trust, let's go ahead and pay attention to what Eon has to say. Promissory note in the deed of trust is evidence of indebtedness. Promissory note itself contained the following language. This note is given as a purchase money note. It is secured by the purchase money deed of trust. The deed of trust, however, contained no language indicating that it was purchase money deed of trust. It merely contained reference to the promissory note executed by Daniel for $30,000. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, let me make sure you understand. You all must get this. This goes on every single day. When you purchase a property, and this he was just getting a loan, but when you purchase a property, they have you put up as a collateral the property that you don't even own yet because you haven't received the loan. Now, just in case some of you are misunderstanding what's being said, nothing is being said that this particular incident happening with Mr. Daniel, this particular case that's being referred to in the background, deals with someone receiving a mortgage promissory note for a home. This individual received a separate loan after there was already a property being owned by his parents. He received an amount for $30,000, supposedly placing the home as collateral for the loan. So make sure that everyone understands that it is clear what was going on in this particular case. However, what is being explained is what happens every single day to everyone else. Now, what the court is saying, oh, well, yes, you're saying it was a purchase money deed of trust, uh, which is literally no such thing. That's a legal term that somebody just created. It's a legal theory that it's a purchase money deed of trust. You, you purchase money. How do you purchase money? Well, of course, Daniel did it with his credit. See, he got a loan, and it was an advancement in so-called purchase money. What is this new terminology, purchase money? That is its own legal term. You know, as a matter of fact, why not we do that? Why not we look up the legal definition for purchase money? 
real quick. I went slow because I thought that it might already have someone looking up this particular phrase, but I did not see any indication that it has been researched before. And so we will see what pulls up in our search in Google. Legal definition of purchase money. The consideration paid or to be paid by the purchaser of property. Okay, like I said, it's a legal term, ladies and gentlemen. So it is the consideration paid or to be paid by the purchaser of property. So again, I will ask the question, how can you purchase money? How can you buy money? Consideration which is agreed to be paid to the purchaser of a thing in money. Okay, consideration which is agreed to be paid by the purchaser of a thing in money. It is called an equitable lien. Interesting, ain't it? Like I said, they created this legal theory. They created a legal doctrine. There was no such thing. There is no such thing. You cannot purchase a thing in money. See, it's called a purchase money agreement. The bank loaned him money in consideration of what? That he would pay them back. Okay, what money did they loan him? They did not loan him cash. Go back. Take a look at the law. It says, I want you to focus on this word right here. In all contracts, there must be value and consideration. We've already had so many discussions that legal tender in the form of Federal Reserve notes have no value. So what did the bank loan him? They loaned him credit. It is impossible. Purchase money contracts are impossible because there is no money. So how could they loan him money? It is a presumption, and so you have to disprove the presumption. Let's let Eon finish. You cannot do that. You can make a promise to pay, but you cannot promise to pay something that you don't own, that does not belong to you. You don't have the authority. Possessions is nine-tenths of the law. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to repeat that in a second, but I need you to understand something. If you don't have the authority to loan or to put up as collateral, something you don't possess, something you don't own, well, the banks don't have the authority to lend you something for which they don't possess, for which they don't own. The banks have no money. They have no access to money. All they have is credit. But the bank's credit is not more valuable than your credit. Your full faith and credit is more valuable than any credit by a corporation. Pay attention. Your Full faith in credit is more valuable than that of any corporation. How do you have full faith in credit? Because as one of the people, and that's why you identify yourself as a people for the state of, not of the United States, but for the state in which you reside, which you domicile, which you live, you document yourself as one of those people. And as one of those people, you have inalienable rights. And one of those rights is that of a creditor. That's right. Full faith in credit makes you a creditor. Why do you think the United States government borrows from you? The United States government borrows from you, making you a creditor. So creditors in commerce, you guys remember them? with Brandon and Gordon Hall were on the money with making everyone understand that they were secured party creditors, which is why the new SAT packs include a promissory note where you are 
in contract lending money to the U.S. government and by lending monies to the U.S. government in contract in a trust agreement, which there is no law prohibiting, then that gives you every right to move forward. Every right to use that credit, that standing to your benefit. So as a creditor, ladies and gentlemen, understand your capacity within the United States. As one of the people of a state, relook at the 10th and the 9th amendments to the Bill of Rights. 10th and 9th ones, look at those again and see where your power lies. Your power is in being a state citizen and not a United States citizen. One is superior to the other. So that makes you one of the people of the United States and not a citizen of the United States. But you must identify yourself as one of the people of your state. Revisit your constitution and note what that constitution says. Note what your rights are under your state constitution. And when you want to walk into somebody's court, bring that constitution with you and incorporate the Bill of Rights of the United States because the Bill of Rights are common law rights, which is why each state in the Union must have a set of rights that are equal to that of the Bill of Rights of the United States. If you don't believe me, do your research. I've mentioned this to you all many, many times. The Constitution required the Northwest Ordinance required that each state adopt a set of rights that were commonplace to all people in all states. Go ahead, look at all the states that have your right to petition the government for redress agreements. You know, a state like Louisiana says that it's not a common law state. They say that. However, Louisiana is a common law state. They were set up under common law. How do we know? because Louisiana was acquired by what's known as the Louisiana Purchase. Louisiana didn't receive its own rights. Louisiana was created by the people in the purchase of, I believe it was, I think it was $7 billion is the total cost of the Louisiana Purchase from Spain. So Louisiana wasn't its own state. They became a state. They don't get the right to say we don't want common law because they were acquired under common law. Go back, take a look at the rules. Take a look at the purchase. That was under common law, times of common law. So understanding the Bill of Rights, every state requiring the Bill of Rights, understanding your capacity as a citizen of your state and the rights you retain as a citizen of your state. You lose rights when you make application. So on your applications, from now on, you put only to ex the extent to facilitate my intent. Just write that on the application. Only to the extent to facilitate my intent. Just that simple. What does that mean? It says that this contract is not me giving up any rights. This is only to the extent of me getting what I came for. And not beyond that. Well, when you go and you apply for a Department of Motor Vehicles driver's license, you're giving up your right to travel freely. No, you must travel within this bounds, this border, this range only. Now, look, ladies and gentlemen, you may have the right to travel, but you don't have the right to do 100 miles an hour. Sorry, you do not. This is not the Autobahn. You see, common law says that which is common. Well, the common person does not do 100 miles an hour. Doesn't matter how you want to formulate it. Doesn't matter how you think about it. Your logic does not apply in common law. Common law is not selfish law. Common law is that of your neighbor. What is beneficial to the others, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the one. Common law, people. 
Yes, yes, people have been stating it for centuries in different forms, but that is common law. Common law is due to your neighbors. You would have your neighbor do to you. Well, you don't understand. You think that that's a selfish statement because you think it's all about you. It is not about you. It is not about you. Common law is about them, the common people. You'll hear the Supreme Court talk about the common people all the time. Because that is the so-called democracy for which the United States created. Because it hadn't existed before. Where the common people came together and they said, no, this is what we want. Now, it did exist in ancient times. It did exist where everybody treated their neighbor fairly. Did exist where they had a justice system that was supposed to operate fairly. And yes, sometimes it went wayward. And those who went wayward had to pay for their waywardness. But that was the system. Let's get back to Eon. So that little one-tenth does not give you the right to take somebody else's property and put it up as collateral. And that's exactly what you are doing when you are purchasing these properties. That's exactly what you are doing when you are purchasing these properties. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to go for a moment. One. Okay. Now, what I had to do when I said I had to go is... I looked out the window. I have some tents I use as storage. There's nothing being stored in them right now, but we've been getting 50 mile an hour gusts. And these gusts have been sustained winds at about 4.45 every single afternoon. Since the 26th of July, these wind gusts have been consistent every single afternoon and they have been strong. Well, they have taken yesterday one of my tents and blew it away. And when it took that tent and blew it away, I had to go chase it down. It didn't go far, but I had to go chase it down. These tents are light, but they're heavy at the same time. And so I had to literally drag it back. And so it took me some time to get back. When I went out, the headset disconnected from the computer because I kept the headset on and it's Bluetooth. When it disconnected from the computer, when I came back, it failed to reconnect properly to this system so that you all could hear my voice. So that's why it lost my voice. I thought I corrected it, but I didn't. So we're going to go ahead and finish explaining okay, what I, I was explaining here. Everyone. Uh, first thing I have to do is turn the mic back on. So one sec. And see, that was the problem. The mic was already back on, and I couldn't tell. Had I left it the way it was, you would have heard everything. But then when I noticed that there were two mics connected, both the Bluetooth surround sound speaker and the headset Bluetooth, I didn't want it to be double feedback, as you heard just a second ago. Okay, back. Okay, you see what I'm saying? That was exactly what happened the two systems competing with each other and it just wouldn't allow it. So let's get back to this. I'm going to explain while, and that's what I'm explaining here about the double connection. And that was the problem. Even though it says I'm connected and this is the speaker that I'll be using. Very good speaker, very good company. A lot of people don't like the speaker because of how it's designed, but I, I am very, 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 very proud of the, that headset. Now, as I'm explaining, and I'm, I'm not going to speed up too much, we've already talked about purchase money. We've already talked about a deed of trust. What has happened over since 2009, 2010, the court started saying a deed of trust wasn't a trust agreement. Well, that is a lie. A deed of trust is a trust agreement. It has all the natures of a trust agreement. Just look up what constitutes a trust agreement. Well, let's do that. We're going to pause Eon for a second. Let's do that. Let's put up Now, we said legal definition of a trust agreement. A trust agreement is a document that allows you to trust or to legally transfer ownership 
of specific assets to another person, a trustee, to be held for the trustor's beneficiary. That's what a trust is. Well, how does the deed of trust transfer property? Well, it transfers control of the property to the trustee. And should you default, it allows the trustee to secure that property for the beneficiary's benefit and to sell the property so that they get paid. It is a trust agreement. Now, if you don't believe me, like I said, all you have to do is go and do the research. Okay? Trusts are established to provide legal protection to the trustor's assets. An unfunded trust consists only of the trust agreement with no funding. Then you have Black's Law Dictionary of a Trust Agreement. Formal agreement where the trust or will vests ownership rights to one or more of the assets to one or more trustees to conserve. One second. Now, here it is. The courts are saying that when you transfer assets to a trustee, it's not for ownership of the beneficiary. Well, actually it is. You see, the condition is if you fail to pay then they can foreclose, which is why foreclosures are running rampant because of the deed of trust. It's a contractual agreement for which they hold you bound by. Well, it is a trust agreement. And those of you who are going into court, who are having your properties foreclosed on, you are having the courts do this to you because you are failing to highlight what a trust instrument is. Here is Nevada. This is Nevada legislature. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Guess what you're going to find? You're going to find that every single trust agreement, the law is exactly the same. Okay? See, it says electronic trust. Has anybody ever heard of an electronic trust? Interesting, ain't it? Uh, testamentary trust, we know about those. But what I'm going to ask you guys to do is understand this one right here. This is interesting. An electronic trust. Okay. Electronic trust? That don't make any sense. Trustee selling from one trust to self as trustee of another trust. Okay. They have created their trust act. This is the trust act. Okay. Trust powers which may be included in a will or an agreement by reference. Okay, they create limits and control. And I just came to the control part, but they create limits and control of trust. Now, here is a common law trust. Now, how do they get to define what a common law trust are? They don't. It says... These sections do not abrogate or limit any principle, rule of common law, unless common law principle or rule is inconsistent with the provisions of that inclusive. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't get to abrogate your right to do a trust, especially a common law trust. They cannot control common law trust by statute. Common law trust supersedes statute because common law is the supreme law of the land. Many people don't know that. They think the United States Constitution is the supreme law of the land. Ladies and gentlemen, common law is the supreme law of the land. It was the law at the time the country was founded. Common law is the supreme law of the land. All right, let's let Eon continue. We're going to stop right here. It says, in these cases, a single mortgage deed of trust was given to secure several notes. But well, we're not concerned about several notes. However, it says they must be treated as separate notes, separate deeds of trust. Well, see, if the deed of trust was given to secure several notes, then if one violated one note, then that means they could foreclose on all the property. And that would be the problem. And whoever would sign something like that is stupid. Okay, they lack all kind of common sense. They are greedy. You don't do that. You do it separately for each note. But the person 
probably had some business scheme or business deal that they were working out and thought that it would be to their advantage. This is what we want you to keep in mind. This is the part that we were highlighting in the video. If it is to be kept in mind that the terms of the obligation must be determined, get out of the way, from the note, and that the mortgage or the deed of trust is collateral and simply intended to secure payment. Now, this is where the courts are saying a deed of trust is not a trust agreement. However, the mortgage, now a mortgage is separate from the note. That's why it says the note and that the mortgage or deed of trust, the deed of trust and or mortgage equate to the same thing. Some states have mortgages, other states have deeds of trust. It is the same thing, but a mortgage is just an agreement. They call it a deed of trust because they create a trust relationship with a beneficiary receiving the benefits of the trust, and they can assign and give control to the trustee. That's why you're dealing with trustees, but they also create another contract with you where they can trade your property on the market. For that, they need what's known as a securitization trustee. In other words, they create it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, they say that these are collateral. The mortgage and deed of trust are collateral, it means they have value, and they secure payment. Uh-uh, no, they don't. You see, how can you secure payment with property that you didn't own? The deed of trust and the mortgage both promises that you're going to put the property up for collateral. What secures payment is your credit. Go back and look at the approval of the loan. There was nothing there about putting the property up that you were about to purchase that you didn't have the right to do anything with because it wasn't yours. There wasn't nothing there about putting that up for collateral. You can't do that. You cannot put up for collateral something you don't own. So it could not secure payment. And it has nothing to do with securing payment because an IOU is an IOU. Go back to ancient times when somebody said, hey, I will give you this, and they put down a down payment. The down payment was collateral. Their word was collateral. And that's why the banks say that you have been approved for a loan. Based on your credit, your credit emphasizes the fact that you keep your word 75% of the time, 100% of the time, 90% of the time. So we're going to use that as collateral. That's what's going on. Not the fact that we're going to use the house that you're about to purchase and then we're going to somehow kick you out of your own property just so that we can get what we want. Doesn't work that way, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the way they want it to work. Excuse me one second. I'm trying to find the next spot where I said something. And what I am believing that happened here is that it was a computer glitch as a result of the microphone because we shouldn't have been staying on the same page throughout the whole video. Let's see. Yeah, the reason why is you see this doesn't, it just moves back and forth, but it doesn't go anywhere. The, I'm not going to any other page. So that's how I know that there was much more said but because I can't hear part of the conversation as to what was being said, then I can't tell you where I went after that. So give me one second. Let's see if we can figure it out. The original search yesterday was for a deed of trust is a trust. Today, I've gone a little step further and added is a trust agreement. And this is the search result that is coming up behind us. So I will let that pop up and then we will go from there. Uh, and this, I think, is similar to the case we looked up yesterday, held that under the New York trust law, a transfer of a deed of trust in contravention of the trust documents is void, not merely voidable. And under California law, the borrower can challenge the assignment of his or her note and the deed of trust if the defect asserted would void the assignment. So, ladies and gentlemen, look up in your state assignments and then look up how to do an assignment with the county recorder. And then you will get those assignments procedures. 
then go to the county recorder. Yes, I know legwork, but not a lot of legwork. Because all you got to do is review the record. Tell the county recorder, I need a copy of all assignments done on this property since the beginning of this loan. Just that simple. Give them the date. Tell them I need a copy of all the assignments associated with this property since the beginning. And I need to know where else would such recordings be within the offices of the recorder. I need to know where else would such an assignment be filed and or held and or recorded by the recorder. I also need a copy of any reconveyances and or satisfactions of mortgage that have been placed on file here at the county recorder's office. I also need to know what other department and or office would such a filing have been filed if not here? If you don't know, who is it that I need to talk to to find out since this deals with land records and the law governing this state, Virginia, Oklahoma, Ohio, Idaho, says that the county recorder's office is where the land records are kept. As we told you before, satisfactions of mortgages are done all the time. Now, here is the thing. Pay attention. I want you all to get this because you all are not paying attention to what's going on. Your mortgage, your deed of trust says that you agree to pay. And then they sell your note to someone else. And that person pays the note and now says you owe them. So what gives them the right to foreclose on your property? Now, the deed of trust does say that you are giving permission to someone else can come. You're acknowledging that someone else can come and purchase the property. But no, you didn't have an agreement to put the property up as collateral for that person either. Yes, they can purchase the property, but you don't have an agreement for them to come and foreclose on your property. I'm not transferring no trusteeship to them. The beneficiary can't transfer the beneficial ownership to no one else. That wasn't my intent. Ah, my original purchase for this was for this company, and it was for this many years. The problem is many of you are not challenging the transfer as unlawful. Many of you are not opting out of the trust agreement. See, if the courts are saying it's not a trust agreement, many of you are not opting out. Give me one moment, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize for that. That was uh, court-related business, helping someone with processing some paperwork. Let's get back to this securitization. It says, and this is the point that needs to be made. Another possibility, which was acknowledged by both sides at oral argument, that we talked about this in a previous video, is that the holder of the note and the deed of trust cannot be determined at this stage of the proceedings. Wait, the holder of the note and the deed of trust cannot be determined, so who's bringing a lawsuit? This lack of certainty regarding who holds the deed of trust is not uncommon. Now, do you notice what it says? This lack of uncertainty is not uncommon. When a securitized, securitized trust is involved, mortgage-backed securities. Is your mortgage part of a securitized trust? Is it part of a mortgage-backed security? Is it part of a pooling and servicing agreement? Securitized trust to prove ownership. Often difficult for a securitized trust to prove ownership. It is often difficult for a securitized trust to prove ownership. They cannot because there are Hundreds of investors. Well, the ownership has to be the first in line, first in right investor. Who is that? They don't know. By showing a chain of assignment of the loan from the originating lender. Ladies and gentlemen, the assignments have to be done properly. What's been happening is that the assignments have not been done. This has been a continuation. 
okay? And with that, because it has been a continuation of them not carrying out the assignment properly, that creates the problem. So let's continue. In particular, Glaske alleges that, one, the corpus, the body of Mau, Securitized Trust, um, Washington Mutual, was a pool of residential mortgage notes purportedly secured by liens on residential real estate. Two, at section 2.05 of the pooling and servicing agreement required that all mortgage files transfer to the Wildmo Securitized Trust be delivered to the trustee or initial custodian of the Wildmo Securitized Trust before the closing date of the trust, which was allegedly set for December 21st, 2005, or 90 days thereafter. The trustee or initial custodian of Wildmo Securitized Trust uh, before the, sorry, the trustee of the initial custodian was required to identify all such records as being held by or on behalf of the Wamu Securitized Trust. Gowski, give me one second. I'm having some feedback, so one second. Now, I don't know how this case ended, um, but I will tell you that what happens is the assignment did not occur by the closing date of the trust in December 2005. Now, what if you don't know the closing date? Well, when you bring forth your claim, what you're going to say is that the assignment did not occur by the closing date of the trust. Don't put a date. Just put the presumption. It is believed that the assignment did not close by the closing date of the trust and that the transfer of the trust that was attempted by an assignment of the deed of trust occurred after the closing of the trust. Okay, and so the attempted assignment was ineffective as to the, and you named the trust, and could not have been accepted. See, if the assignment is breached, if the assignment is botched, then guess what? They cannot proceed. If the assignment is breached, if the assignment is botched, then they have violated your due process rights. They cannot proceed. The Court of Appeals addressed whether the mortgage has standing to enforce, the mortgager has standing to enforce or object to a securitization or transfer of a beneficial interest under the note and deed of trust. This is what I was suggesting earlier, is letting them know that you don't agree that they can transfer your note. Nowhere in Jenkins SAC, and I don't know what SAC stands for, so I'd have to go to that case to find out. Are facts alleged as to how quality actions violated an express or implied duty under the deed of trust? See, you have to show, see, express or implied, those are contractual terms. They're also deed of trust, I mean, trust terms. A trust can either be expressed or implied, and a duty can either be expressed or implied. Furthermore, given these undisputed facts, we cannot identify any plausible allegations as to how Quality's actions, were, which were expressly authorized and mandated by the deed of trust, may have violated the deed of trust implied covenant of good faith and fair dealings. It is well established the scope of implied covenants of good faith and fair dealings in any contract cannot be interpreted so, as, so broadly as to prohibit a party from taking an action that is expressly authorized by the agreement. Accordingly, sustaining the demurrer without leave to amend as to Jenkins' claims against quality was proper. See, actually it wasn't proper because now he needs he was to be given an opportunity to correct his initial objection. So he appealed because they didn't give him the right to correct. But as I told you, there's a case that I just received where the court is giving a party an opportunity to correct their issues. Now, look, Jenkins cannot assert claims against Chase for Wamo's lending and loan servicing activities prior to Wamo's financial collapse. However, actually he can, because what he does is he brings the claim against Wamo and Chase. 
And since Chase took over Wamu's assets without contract, pay attention. Chase took over Wamu's assets without contract. There was no contractual agreement between Wamu and Chase. They just assigned Wamu to Chase and to Bank of America. When that happened, there was no contractual agreement. So, of course, we can assign that to Chase and to Bank of America because they assumed responsibility for the failure of WAMU. And so did the federal government because these were all mortgage-backed securities. So there was a proper complaint, but he didn't bring up the fact that it was transferred prior or after the sale and in violation of the agreement for securitization, the pooling and servicing agreement, which is what he should have done. Okay, the deed of trust securing the plaintiff's $25,000 note specified that the deed of trust is third and subject to a first trust deed and a second trust deed of record. The deed of trust securing the plaintiff's $75,000, which is a total of $100,000 note, is the trust deed is second subject to the first deed of record. Now, why are they loaning this person money when they know that there are two other deeds that are outstanding? There is an automatic subordination. When, without any express executory agreement, the subordinate on specified conditions, the escrow instructions provide that the lender construction loan deed of trust is to be recorded prior to the vendor's purchase money deed of trust. Okay, don't need this because this is not, this is all this is doing is deed of trust and not showing that a deed of trust is a trust agreement. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a deed of trust is a trust agreement. And I'm going to have to do that in Google. And the reason why I have to do that in Google is because I have to get the actual wording in Google. Now, we're not going to take this very much longer because I have those motions that I have to put together for certain clients that needs to get done. And no, we don't do motions for clients. These are prior clients whom we have an obligation to that we're doing the motions for. Let's pay attention. A deed of trust is an agreement between a home buyer and a lender at the closing of property. It states that the home buyer will repay the loan and the mortgage lender will hold the legal title to the property until the loan is paid in full. Okay, now that's rocket mortgage, but I didn't ask for that. I asked was a deed of trust a trust agreement. See, deed of trust is an agreement. No, I need trust agreement. I'm looking for that actual phrase. Deed of trust or trust deed is a document that secures the loan properly. The deed of trust is uh, no. So let's go ahead and narrow our phrase down because that's the, let's do that and let's do that. Now let's see if we get a difference. Yeah, see, the first one we have was Rocket Mortgage, a document that embodies an agreement between the lender and the borrower and transfers interest to the borrowers uh, in the borrower's land to a neutral third party, a trustee, to secure payment for the debt of the borrower, which is the benefits of holding the property. Okay, I can only guarantee you that a deed of trust is a trust agreement. What is a trust deed agreement? What is a trust deed, a contract. Let's look at that because that is a trust deed represents an agreement between a borrower and a lender to have the property held in trust, to have the property held in trust by a neutral and independent third party until the loan is paid off. So a deed of trust is a trust agreement because the property is held in trust. Certificate of trust versus trust agreement. A trust agreement is an estate planning document that allows you to transfer ownership. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Yeah, they, they want to definitely get technical. Trust warrants that this trust deed of trust is and will remain valid and enforceable. First lien on the premises subject only to approved title exceptions. And trust certificate, title holding trust. Hmm. 
Okay. What to do if you can't find the original trust? Lost trust documents are more common than you would think. Have copies of the trust agreement along with the copies of the California Assumption uh, Agreement. Oh. Let's let's do this. Uh, I'm going to do deed of trust missing or incomplete assignment. We're going to do that first. Okay, here are defendant Chase is implicit in only one of the deed of trust, or implicated, excuse me, and executed an affidavit of missing incomplete assignments. Now, they do missing or incomplete assignment affidavits all the time. Assignment of transfer of note and deed of trust, abstract. Affidavit of missing or incomplete assignment. Okay, now, that affidavit can only be done by someone and resulting in first-hand knowledge. Okay, forensic examination of real property records and a beneficiary of mortgage deed of trust executed borrower's missing or incomplete assignments record uh, appears to have. Ladies and gentlemen, what I want to let you all know is that's the first thing you want to do is your research on missing or incomplete assignments. Okay, now... Let's do I'm going to put remedy because I want to see what the remedy is. Now, the remedy is for them to do an affidavit, but that's not uh -uh. that's not it. Uh-oh. Student parent handbook. Uh we don't care about no missing assignment for no child. We said deed of trust. Lord have mercy. They're talking about missing assignments, uh, respecting a child in their uh, in their schoolwork. Okay, so it doesn't like remedy. So let's do F O R E C L O U S E R. Um. Sorry that you was in the wrong place. All right. Gave, gives us the same case and commenced the present action to retain the foreclosure of the two deeds of trust encumbered by the subject property. Ladies and gentlemen, I would definitely be going over this because watch this. Uh, I'm going to take this. No, I didn't want to do that. Let's. Put that back. Control Z undoes the action. Let's control C to copy. And then let's go back here and let's control V to paste. Uh oh. I wasn't trying to do that, so I got to put this back. Okay. We put it back. And we got to get rid of this because didn't need that. And we go back here. So, as I said, control V as in Victor to paste. And we hit enter. And we look for the new case. And I won't go into too much detail on this because I want to end this before the hour is uh, on the video. Chase executed an affidavit missing due to trust recorded in the county. You're lying, it appears. That there is a gap in the chain of assignment of security with Deutsche National Bank custodian trustee and such assignment either were never completed or incomplete, or if completed, were never recorded. Such assignments cannot now be obtained. Although Chase is now in possession of the promissory note and the collateral filed for the note recorded against the assignment deed of trust, da, 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 da. Chase makes multiple arguments in its motion for judgment on the pleading, lack standing 
under the Deed of Trust Act to complain about the foreclosure because he is neither the borrower nor the grantor. Soros did not challenge possession of the note and is the holder of the note entitled to foreclose. Uh, Chase entitled Soros should be judicially stopped. That's what they're saying. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's a missing assignment, they cannot foreclose. And if he's in possession of the property, he can come in and argue. This is what we want you all to study, go over. Missing assignments, go over this case. Go to casetext.com. Get yourself a temporary um, access, okay, by the trial. See, I got six days left on my free trial. It is free. Get yourself the free trial. and take care of things from there okay those of you who are about to go through foreclosure this is one of the key things that you are going to need to do your research on is the missing assignments because there are certain laws regarding assignments you don't have to study the laws you just have to go over some of these cases that say what you're expecting it to say see this says that there are only three cases but that's not true i promise you there are more than three cases why because each one of these cases lists cases within the case that will take you other places. Okay, this is again because the previous assignments were not recorded. The law requires that they be recorded. That's why you're going to look to see at the county recorder's office any and all assignments for that property since you did the original loan okay now those of you also just so that you can have an understanding take your property if you're in foreclosure and quit quit claim the property into a trust watch this sorry i do have to get going but what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all of this Q U I T C L I I M. L L C. So we're going to do L L C first. Then you're also going to do the same query search for a quick claim property into a trust. This is into an L L C held suit to quiet title properly dismissed where LLC purported deeds were recorded after the less pendants on the property was recorded. And therefore, the LLC would have been bound by the foreclosure judgment in favor of U.S. Bank. See, people have done this after they did the notice of less pendants or notice of pending suit. So no, because now that you've been given a notice of pending suit, yes, you don't get to put it in an LLC, okay? But this is to let you know that people often take properties and places them into LLCs. K deeded the property and mobile home back to the debtor pursuant to a quit claim deed. Executed January, blah, blah, blah. The president and manager of K properties, LLCs. Okay, want to let you know that this is commonly done to help people save their property. Do your research. I'm giving you the angles for where you can do your research because a lot of people have been writing us, asking us how to do certain things. And so what we're doing here is we're placing this information through SATCOM, making it available to everyone so that they can do research and help scave off some of the uh, waywardness of foreclosures. Under the terms of the quit claim deed, the property was transferred to the trust and into the trust estate. Now, I have no idea what this case dealt with, but the declaration of trust named Rudolph, three children, appellant Judith, Scalafaro and appellees Richard and James Ruloff as equal one-third beneficiaries. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have no idea what their documents look like. I have no idea what their documents stated. The basis of his action was to have his quit claim deed, which contained an 11-month repurchase option, adjudged a mortgage so that the title and income of the land could be impressed with a trust for his benefit. The court noted that the creditor was had remained in constructive possession since 1922, conveyance of title. In addition, the creditor had been in open and notorious possession of the land because this is adverse possession. Okay, that's why they mentioned open and notorious possession. Notorious, again, open and notorious possession. The property was quit claimed into the LJ Trust and TD Trust and the JT Trust. Ladies and gentlemen, it does enough for you to slow things down to take your property and place it in a trust. Now, again, those of you who already have trust agreements, such as SATPACs, then all you have to do is do a notice of assignment into the trust and quit claim the property into the trust. Okay? Now, see this one? The plaintiff then recounts the history of the collection efforts made after he stopped paying his mortgage payments and the various correspondence he sent to the defendants and others. Now, a lot of people have been trying to do this on their own. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we're not in a position at SACOM to help you with this. Sorry, it's not that we don't know what we're doing. No, we just don't have the time. I'm sorry. Starting a new program, starting a new set packs, this is not what we do. Okay? We have programs that we've listed on our site, which shows what we do. We don't do anything outside of that. Not right now, because we cannot afford to. We have to perfect what we're doing now. I know that there's a thousand different things we could do, a thousand different things we could talk about, but we can only handle that for which we have contracted with our clients to handle. All the other subsequent issues that come as a result of utilizing the legal services of SACOM, the legal services of SAA, we cannot be held responsible for those consequences. We can suggest to you that these are angles that you might want to consider. And that's what we'll be doing from time to time. Thus, this video and the past four videos. We have about eight more that we'll be putting up over the next few days. So we ask that you those of you who are sap packers, please give us a, a listen. We're going to ask that you all have a good day, and we'll continue to try to provide you with everything you need. And we bring this information to your attention, and we say, have a good day, everyone.